epileptogenicity is a very complex topic. It's a process which takes place between an event in the brain. It can be a genetic um, problem in, in some cells or in the global brain. It can be a lesion like a brain trauma or a stroke. Um, and then after a certain period, the first seizure comes. So this process is called epileptogenesis. And probably there's also a process where after the first seizure, compensatory mechanisms try to tune down the hyper excitability, uh, which fails. And then you have another seizure, another seizure, which again drives the network being more hyper excitable. So this theory or this hypothesis, this background, is very well evidenced in animals. But in humans, it's, uh, of course, we are also animals, but in humans, we are more complex, more complicated animals than the other species. So uh, the process which we want to attack is to prevent epilepsy in its generation, which means to make an effort to provide anti-epileptogenesis. One of the most common causes for disability in life is stroke. Um, stroke is the second most common cause of death worldwide uh, and the most common cause of disability in the elderly, associated with cognitive deficits, associated with post-stroke depression, and associated with epilepsy. About 35% of all newly diagnosed epilepsy patients are in the elderly group, mainly caused by stroke. So it's clinically relevant. It's a public health uh, challenge to uh, tackle anti-epileptogenesis. In the past, several randomized controlled trials tried to find a prevention against epilepsy, for example, brain trauma. So they gave anti-epileptic drugs early on and then looked after one year, two year, uh, period, um, what is the frequency of seizures in these patients, treated or untreated? And astonishingly, there was no difference. So these drugs which we have at the moment are not anti-epileptic or anti-epileptogenic. They just suppress seizures. If we remove, probably the seizures will remain the same, and they have no effect on the epileptogenesis. So... What we try to do is to bring a few substances to the clinics uh, in trials, which are promising, in a population with high risk of having seizures, uh, exposing them for a short period to this drug, four weeks, not longer, uh, where the epileptogenicity probably takes place in humans. We have some evidence in, in, in stroke and then look at the outcome. So this trial is initiated by Matthias Kerp and myself, and it's sponsored by a Portuguese company, um, and it's currently recruiting. So we are very anxious to see uh, what the results are, uh, and um, this will be a major step in doing that. Why is it so important? Because if one company starts to look at the problem, others also follow. That's the mechanism of, of, of how it goes. And I know that um, in Australia and also in the US, similar studies are on the way. One major study looks at uh, uh, post-traumatic epilepsy. Two other studies look at post-stroke epilepsy. So this became a hot topic. I have to say it's a risky thing because there have been many shining stars in the animal fields, in the preclinical experiments, which are fantastic anti-epileptic. But if you bring them to the human field, they fail. And it may be because it's the wrong study design or it's the wrong drug which we which we use to prevent epilepsy. And no one knows what will be the outcome of the study. But uh, maybe in two years' time, I can report to you in the same setting what will be the results.